Howdy y'all, JFK here. Welcome to the table. Welcome to Top of Texas Beer Review number one. I want you to join me as I go forward and you go forward in your discovery of new and exciting beers. I want to focus on Texas and Oklahoma and Southern Plains beers, but uh, these beer reviews are not going to be limited just to that. But I want to focus today, I want to focus episode number one on the history of regional beer brewing in the Southern Plains, specifically today in Oklahoma. I remember many years ago, probably 15 plus years ago, being at a store either in North Texas or Southwest Oklahoma and seeing a bottle of chalk beer. I remember taking a six pack home and I remember enjoying it thoroughly. In fact, I, I remember going back to get more. I've had a lot of beers since then. Back then, I really liked chalk beer. I liked Boulevard Unfiltered Wheat. I liked St. Pauli's Girl. I liked Canadian beers. Well, today, as of this recording, I like KBS. I like Boulevard's Bourbon Barrel Quad. I like Dogfish Head 120. So since I've been a fan many years ago of chalk beer, my palate has certainly developed and uh, I hope that development continues. So chalk beer was actually a generic term in the early 1900s, uh, a generic term for beers brewed often at home in the tradition of the Choctaw. Not chocolate, but the Choctaw tribe. The Choctaw who often beard their brews using tobacco and fruits. From what I understand, the alcohol, the malt liquor that they developed was um, fruity in nature and very intoxicating, even for the white man. Another thing that came along in the early 1900s in Southeast Oklahoma was Italian immigrants. Coal mining town of Krebs, Oklahoma was a big attraction to Italian immigrants who wanted to make their living in, uh, in the United States as coal miners. One of those guys, hey, here comes the raging alcoholic. This is uh, Bucky, everyone, and uh, obviously he's come to uh, perhaps knows the dram of whiskey that we have here. So go ahead and give that a nose and tell us what you think. No, not having it. Okay. What was it? Curiosity killed the cat. Excuse me a moment and uh, we will move the master of the house here. <laughs> okay. None of, enough of the shenanigans. Okay, so a fellow by the name of, I believe his first name, his birth name was Pietro, uh, but he adapted the name Pete Pritchard, I would assume to seem a little bit more American in the early 1900s Oklahoma. And uh, he originally uh, was a coal miner. But at a, as a young adult, he was in a bad accident. It crushed his leg and he couldn't work anymore. So he had to occupy his time somehow. Um, so he tried his hand at brewing beer, originally brewing beer in the tradition of the Choctaw using ingredients that we don't often see in beer today. And um, as he came up with the final recipe, this would be probably in the late 19 teens, he decided to name his beer that was starting to grow in popularity in tribute to the Choctaw and call it Chalk Beer. And uh, he uh, gained quite a following. But here's the problem. Uh, just as it is today, Oklahoma had very strict regulations on alcohol. In fact, if my memory serves, when Oklahoma came to statehood in 1907, prohibition was the law of the land. Now, part of me thinks that the reason that is, is if you, if you know your Oklahoma history, you know that um, 
part of Oklahoma known as Indian Territory. Let me say that again. Uh, part of Oklahoma was known as Indian Territory. There were tremendous populations of Native Americans in what we now call Oklahoma, and there still are. And if you know your history, and if you know your Native American history, you know that there is a, a, a troublesome, sad relationship between alcoholic beverages and Native American tribes to this day. A binge drinking is a very serious problem. And in many uh, even well-established Indian reservations, such as the Navajo Nation in uh, northeastern Arizona, um, prohibition is the law of the land. You cannot take beer, you cannot take any alcoholic beverages into the Navajo Nation. Your first offense is confiscation and uh, the, the penalty grows as your, offended, your offenses become numerous. So you have to wonder if even to this day, Oklahoma has 3.2 beer. That's, that's the strongest beer that you can buy cold in a store. And you have to wonder if this has a relationship, the, the strict regulations on alcohol in Oklahoma uh, is, um, is a connection to uh, the problem between uh, binge drinking and uh, Native Americans. So, I mean, that's neither here nor there. But what I'm getting at is chalk beer for decades was brewed illegally. And then uh, along in 1995, I believe that's when the regulation changed to where you could sell beer in Oklahoma that was quote unquote strong beer, higher than that 3.2, um, but it has to be sold at room temperature. And that's, that's the situation to today. So I remember when, uh, when I was very early in my journey as a, as a craft beer enthusiast, not knowing that extremely strong beers would come along. I really did like chalk beer. I also liked Boulevard's Unfiltered Wheat, and I liked uh, St. Pauli's Girl. I like Foster's. I like Canadian beers. Um, this, was, this was kind of the early stepping stone in my craft beer journey. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to, I am about to uh, drink a chalk beer for the first time in surely over 10 years, and I will review it for you. So uh, let's first see if we can glean anything off of the, the bottle here. Um, 1919 chalk beer, I guess the 1919, the significance is that uh, when Pete Pritchard originally started selling this beer, um, which eventually led to him being arrested and serving time, Chalk Beer Company, Krebs, Oklahoma. We have a website. No statement as far as alcohol by volume or IBUs, which was obviously common when this was being sold in Oklahoma 20 years ago. Um, you didn't see stuff like that. It says it's a American wheat beer. Now, according to, uh, according to Rate Beer, this comes in at a whopping 15 IBUs and 4% alcohol by weight, which translates to about 3.2 alcohol by volume. Um, this is rated as a 78 on Beer Advocate, and that's 126 views. And it is categorized, it is styled as an American Pale Wheat Ale. And, ooh, very, very carbonated very carbonated. Unfiltered, very, very heavily carbonated. Goodness gracious. Wow. Um, I don't see any evidence of, I don't see any evidence of uh, unfiltered, but I'm used to seeing really cloudy stuff like Boulevard Unfiltered Wheat. Obviously, that's kind of a standard of the style. It is a little cloudy. I take that back. It is cloudy. I do see... I do see some chunks floating around there. So, yeah. 
as it begins to settle in, it surely is, uh, surely is cloudy. But man, we're talking about crazy carbonation. Violent currents of com uh, carbonation in this beer. Big fluffy head. Why do people do that? I have no idea. Metal poisoning, I guess. So, you know, I don't, I don't smell beer. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to come at this. I'm not going to come to you as some kind of culinary expert who is wise in the ways of herbs and, um, you know, I'm not going to be the kind of person who can nose a scotch and pull out uh, 17 different uh, scents, um, 17 different sources of smell. The reason I, there's three reasons I smell a beer. To see if it smells good, to see if it smells bad, and quite honestly, I've smelled a lot of bad beers. They've tasted good, but they just smell really bad. And honestly, to see if they smell interesting. See if I can get anything out of it, smell-wise. Is cloudy, still violently carbonated, and there is some, uh, I'm sure there's a more scientific word, but there are some flakes and chunks floating around there. Okay, so let's give it a, let's give it a whirl here. Chalk beer, probably one of the first regional. Well, let's put it this way: chalk, shiner, maybe raw. When I first tried a chalk, it was one of just a handful of regionally brewed beers in Oklahoma, and Texas, easily Oklahoma. Easily Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah, well, I imagined, I imagined that after having um, significantly developed my palate in the last 10 plus years, this would be largely, this experience would be largely underwhelming. And it's, it's a beautiful beer. It's an extremely uh, fizzy beer. It's unfiltered. And I'm getting all of those 15 IBUs. You know, it's not bad, a little dry. Does it drink like anything else I've had recently? Not really. Um, it's, you know, it's every bit a, uh, every bit a wheat ale. You know, you're really getting what you paid for here. I think I gave uh, $9.99 for a six pack um, yeah, it's good. You know, honestly, this, I think this would be a wonderful introduction to, um, uh, you know, the Virgin Craft Beer palette. I think, uh, if you were sending someone on their way to develop that palette and kind of get them started at the ground level, this would be a nice introduction. It's certainly not citrusy, um, as say a Boulevard unfiltered wheat. Um, almost every ale that Boulevard does, there has kind of a citrusy twang to it. This does not have that. This is, this comes off as a little drier than that. Uh, it drinks very similar though. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very serviceable wheat. Um, would I buy it again? Probably not, but... That's simply because I'm farther along on the journey. Now, if this was available at a sports bar and I was knocking back a batch of wings or burger or something, this would be a very, uh, this would be a good companion for heavy, savory 
foods. And uh, it's a beautiful beer in a glass. Just wish there's a little less carbonation. Sometimes that can serve as a distraction in the overall in the overall uh, drinking experience. The uh, nothing really noticeable noticeable as far as or notable I should say as far as mouthfeel um, leaves fairly quickly because of the carbonation. Some of it wants to come up a little bit. Um, the wheat, the wheat flavor hangs around. It's probably, uh, what you get kind of at the back end of the flavor profile. Now, considering this was available in Oklahoma and perhaps parts of Texas, at least as far as distributed beyond Pete's place in Krebs, Oklahoma, the fact that this was available... 20 years ago, that's pretty admirable. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's just, I don't think it's something I would buy again. So let's talk. Let me, uh, let me have another. So, so this is unquestionably Oklahoma beer history. Krebs uh, is still kind of the beating heart of craft beer brewing in the state of Oklahoma, a state which to this day has very strong conservative restrictions on alcohol. You cannot buy cold beer in Oklahoma that is over 3.2% alcohol. But as I speak, fantastic things are happening in Krebs, Oklahoma. Chalk, obviously Chalk did not put Oklahoma on the map when it came to craft beers. When we think of a brewery that put Oklahoma on the map, we think of two former employees at Pete's Place at Chalk Brewing that decided to take matters into their own hands. Um, Chalk did them the service uh, of providing them some space in their brewery to start crafting their own beers. A few years later, they would become known as Prairie Artisan Ales. Still, many of the Prairie beers are brewed in Krebs. Some of the more specialized brews are being, uh, are being brewed in Tulsa. What I have here is a bottle of something, I think one of the more recent offerings from Prairie Artisan Ales. This is the Coffee Oki, an imperial brown ale aged in whiskey barrels with coffee beans. This chalk beer rolls in at about 3.2 or 4% alcohol by volume. That's, that's an assumption because that is not stated on the beer. This bottle of Coffee Oki comes in at 13%. We're talking wine, uh, in fact, stronger than wine. This is going to be my next review. So we'll, we will have come full circle. The reason, the reason I went back is to go forward and let you know that amazing things are happening in Krebs, Oklahoma. Amazing things are happening in the state of Oklahoma. Amazing things are happening in the state of Texas. So we're going to proceed. Um, again, my focus is going to be Southern Plains beers. That's gonna be primarily Oklahoma and Texas, primarily Oklahoma and North Texas. But I'm going to invite other brewers to the table from time to time. So that concludes Chalk Beer Review number one. Uh, if I were to rate this, say one to five stars, um, judging it according to style, I'd probably bring it in at, at a 3.5, maybe a 3.75. It is 
what it is and really nothing more. It's not adventurous, but it's, it's Oklahoma brewing history. It's Southern Plains brewing history. Next review is gonna be something a whole lot different. So this is episode number one. I'm excited what may lie ahead. I invite you and I welcome you to the table. I say cheers, my dears, and uh, onward and upward for craft beer drinking.